Greetings, podcastlings. It's Chris Hardwick. So, a couple quick pieces of business before we get into the podcast. Uh, number one, this was recorded on February 14th. I know, I know. Why did it take you so long to put it on the internet? I don't know. It just did. Uh, I was busy. I don't have a good excuse. Uh, I'm sure I will still get people online who are like, Yeah, hey, why do you keep referring to Valentine's Day? Herf. And they'll spell out Hermf. And uh, I don't know. To those people, pretend that you've slipped through a rift in time. A very ineffectual rift that only takes you forward two weeks. And, and yay, you get to travel in time. So uh, second thing is that right after the Rob Hubel interview, I ran over to the House of Blues and talked to Motion City Soundtrack quickly while they were setting up for their February 14th show here in Los Angeles. So not as long as the Hubel interview, but uh, still a twofer. Or more like a one and a quarterer, because it's a little shorter. But I'll talk to them really fast, and then uh, they play a song, and then it was awesome. So thanks to those guys for doing that and letting me tack it on to the end of this one. And then last piece of business, uh, if you listen to this before March 6th, I will be headlining the Improv in Los Angeles doing stand-up comedy jokes. Uh, Mike Furman's going to be there. Jonah Ray from this podcast will be there. Greg Barron, a lot of really awesome people. And then also, March 12th and 13th, I'll be performing at Comics in New York, and I'm only going to be doing four shows, and I probably won't be doing any stand-up in New York again for a while, so come out to that. And all the details, of course, are always at uh, Nerdist.com if you care. So that's enough business for now. I'm going to quit talking now so you can hear me talk more. Weird. Now entering Nerdist.com. Started yet? We are recording. We're recording. Yeah. Right now we are. Right now. Right now. This now. is this is the recording part. Right and now. begin. Does everyone sound okay? Because last sounds... week there was a bit of a there was a bit of an audio disaster. It sounds much better. It does sound. Do good. I sound okay? You now? sound fantastic. Can Jenna. you hear me? I can. Man, do I... so many jokes lost. <laughs> do I sound as gay as I want to sound? You could sound a little gayer. I think you're gay enough. All right. But Let who me try said to... that, Chris? Let me try to gay it up. <laughs> Who's the one that just said that? Oh, so we introduce the guest? <laughs> He's already fucking talking. Guys, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Rob Hubel is here. Um, if there was an audience, they'd be, they'd be, they would be cheering and clapping. Mm-hmm. I like how we're doing it like it's not in the title. Number right. two, oh. Rob Hubel. Well, what about the blind? Why do you hate them? Yeah, what about blind people? There's no fuck. iTunes isn't in how Braille, do they work Matt. It? How do they work iTunes? They, 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 it doesn't raise off the screen so they can read letters with their fingers. So we need uh, to tell people who's on Snow the show. Snow Leopard supports many Braille readers. I can't even publish iCal <laughs> with password protecting it, so... But I can't even... <laughs> the iCal evil nerd rage. <laughs> iCal, you win again. Um, Thank God they have you. So yeah, we're in the, uh, currently in the Web Soup offices because uh, we didn't know where else to go today. This uh, is creepy on the weekends. It's, de- it's, com- it's yeah. like a freaking graveyard. This would be a place to rape somebody. If you were going, I'm, I'm not. I'm not well, saying like, that I'm like thinking. About, no, I'm not. Pl- I'm no, not no, currently just, planning in one. But I'm isn't saying that part if your travel guide, <laughs> places to rape. Oh, what if someone published Pro- a book? Homer's guide. Yeah. <laughs> and right behind, there's a great little alley for raping people. <laughs> it's right under the oldest building in Amsterdam. <laughs> right by the La Brea Tar Pits. <laughs> um, and also, really good coffee around the corner. So when your energy's low from all that raping, <laughs> well. Uh, I, we've officially earned the explicit box that's next to <laughs> oh, whoops. the title. Of the, no, it's fine. You can say whatever you want. Um, I, you know, Rob Hubel and I were talking about the fact that uh, as we were walking up to the podcast and, and Matt Myra was setting it up, Mac Nerd, Matt Myra, and uh, Jonah Ray on my right. I was just sitting around. Just sitting around. You guys were all doing stuff? I was yeah, just what were you guys right doing here already? Why are you here on Valentine's Day? Or should I not date this? It's not Valentine's Day. Oh, it doesn't date, matter. You can't date you a can podcast, date Rob. Oh. Sorry. Homophones, words that sound like other words. <laughs> uh, Jonah has made these 8-bit uh, awesome things with post-it notes. So there's a there's a, uh, a, a flaming Super Mario up there. Like when he... I know that sounded weird. I didn't mean it that way. But when he, when he gets the fireball, there's fireball Super Mario. Oh, yeah. Then there's a Tom Servo right behind you. Yeah, Tom and there's Servo. A, and then, then there's a Mega, Mega, Man. Mega Man. All made out of colored post-its. Yeah, I actually had to special order the black post-its. Boring! <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Worst podcast. <laughs> 
best <laughs> ever. <laughs> Those guys talked for two hours about colored post-it notes. Yep. <laughs> I wanted notes. to kill myself. <laughs> you but see, I because, Rob, you can listening. get orange. There's also aqua. Then there's salmon. You can get salmon <laughs> post-it notes. Um, Rob, you uh, found a dog last night, and that I did was find part of the dog. conversation that we were having before we started recording the podcast. I found a dog last night at midnight, and I put him to sleep uh, Whoa. this morning. Wait, you mean you put him to bed? No, I euthanized him. What? I tried so Why would you... hard to well, find him like a you... home. You... I really gave But it was him overnight. didn't sound like you tried that hard at all. Really... It sounds like you just woke up and then killed him. Well, he was really cramping my style. <laughs> <laughs> it's really... Rob's, Rob's a commitment phobe. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to have really to... Care. I tried to do something nice to help him. Um, no, yeah. I found this uh, this German Shepherd last night in Los Angeles, and uh, he belongs to somebody. I'm telling you, he's really sweet. But uh, right now, I'm here, and he's probably humping my bed or my sofa or something like that. Yeah. Or... What else is he gonna do? He's probably... <laughs> what? Come what? on. I don't know. He's Rob. Say it slower. I don't know. I mean, whatever dogs do. I mean, they probably pull out their little pink penises. <laughs> they probably unwind their lipstick all over your toothbrush. <laughs> Why does my, my toothbrush taste like dog cock? <laughs> Again? <laughs> tastes uh, like dog uh, Sub question. Why do you know the taste of dog cock? That's not the issue. <laughs> the issue uh, here is that my teeth have never looked brighter. <laughs> the taste of dog cock. Are you going to keep them? Do you know? Maybe, um, hey, Rob, maybe well, there's someone out there in our listening audience <laughs> who uh, is missing a Somebody service. Somebody is missing a dog. Um, I found him uh, last night, and I put an ad on Craigslist. And um, yeah, but I went to the, you know, I'm already like attached to him. I went to the pet store today, and I spent like a hundred and something dollars <laughs> like buying stuff. I don't even need, you know, like <laughs> butt plugs for a dog. Like, what? They sell those? Oh, yeah, I think that's what it was. Wow. It could have been a chew toy. I'm there not are sure. weird things. There are like uh, little straps you can uh, get for dogs that just hover around the back of their uh, uh, anus. So that if they poo, they just poo right into the bag. Like Wait a, horse. a second. They don't make that. Do you, you know that? what? I can look I it up right now. Don't, someone, don't someone, you threaten me. Someone showed me on Etsy that someone makes basically stickers for your dog's asshole. Uh, and they and so it's like instead of seeing instead of seeing a, a puckering um, yeah. in, instead of seeing those puckering dog butt lips oh, you see of like a like a tulip yeah <laughs> I would like or a Pac Man yeah and then if they start shitting it just starts spewing out the sides yeah. I oh guess. that's great that's what a lovely idea like uh, like something like the abyss like the thing just, <laughs> just kind of getting into the messier. laboratory but pet stuff is so expensive I really was blown away I, I like even the dumb things you know like the the baggies to pick up. Poop. There it is. The poo trap. He's showing the poo uh, trap. showing us something. No the poops, no oops. Worry free poo collection. Three simple steps. Perfect fit for any size dog. Connects easily to dog collar. Adjustable for any plastic bag. Walking dog. Your diff- what? Is that now the Nerdist Podcast sponsor? Poo traps. <laughs> Thanks poo for trap. turning into. Hey, dog, there's stop this. shitting on the earth. Can you imagine how humiliating that is for a dog? Well, because already dogs, when they're shitting, their ears go back, and they always just kind of look like, I'm sorry, I'm I have so to do this. Sorry. I know I'm this so is sorry. so embarrassing that you have to watch me do this. I'm a good boy. And uh, <laughs> But then to put a fucking, to put a, an uh, ass condom on the back of a dog <laughs> so he can fill it with poop. It looks like a surgical mask. I saw a dog with uh, sunglasses yesterday at the Grove. Was it Spuds McKenzie? It, was, <laughs> it did not have a skateboard or surfboard. Huh. Why was he wearing sunglasses? Did it seem like it was his idea or his owner's idea? I think it was his owner's idea. It was, they were strapped in pretty good, and mm. the owner was like not a typical guy you would think would have a dog with sunglasses. What is he, it? He t- wasn't homeless. What he looked it? like my he looked like my dad, and my dad would never. Was, put it wasn't Nick Nolte from Down and Out in Beverly Hills. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who, who now Nick Nolte has kind of become that guy from Down and Out in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I think Nick decline. Nolte just jumped in our pool with a bunch of rocks in his jacket. Fracker, fracker, fracker. <laughs> well, now he's going to fuck my wife and daughter, and then everything will turn out fine. I don't know, Beverly Hills, not available on VHS. You know what they should do? They should remake uh, Walk Like a Man uh, and have Nick Nolte in the, uh, in the same part. As... You know what? That's a great idea, because I'm tired of good movies being remade. They should go back and make the ones that didn't get it right the first time. Exactly. Oh, that reminds me. I'm in a... Um, uh, oh, am I, I don't want to date this. If I mention a current movie, am I going to date this? Yes, though? but that's fine. Okay, well... Um, People will listen to it, and then they'll throw oh. it away. Well, I I twittered something about going to see that movie Frozen, that horror movie the, about the chairlift. It's, uh-huh. it's three kids that go skiing, and um, I twittered something like, "If you think for a fucking second I'm not going to see this movie, <laughs> then you don't get what I'm trying to do with my life." And but I think I called it a dumb movie, and some kid forwarded it to the director of that movie, 
And so then the kid, the, the director of the movie was like slamming me. He was like, who's this guy? I don't even know who that guy, he doesn't make movies. I make movies. <laughs> <laughs> the director is right. Rush Limbaugh? Yeah, the, dra- yeah. <laughs> the director is Dick Cheney. The d- director is Bob Evans. <laughs> <laughs> Then but, um, I, uh, f- I fucked Ali McGraw, huh? and then I had to tell this kid that he didn't know mm-hmm. dick about he shit. He didn't know yeah. squat about Did cinema. I care? Hell no. Did I fuck <laughs> her? You bet I did. That's, you that's my favorite uh, Robert Evans-isms, uh, is just asking yourself a question and then going, yeah. you bet I did. And then answering it. <laughs> yeah. Do I like asserting a point and then answering it? Yes, I do. <laughs> of course I do. But anyway, that movie seems uh, like a really great movie. Is what I'm, I'm retracting any negative thing I said about that movie. Because I don't want this director to come to my house and beat the crap out of me, so I'm saying that it's probably this a is for great Frozen. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would you do if that was his dog? Oh man, yeah. that, if I found his dog, hmm. And his dog's nice, so he might be kind of a nice guy. Yeah. I would say I'm so sorry I put your dog to sleep. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> to be fair, I froze him. <laughs> he is, huh? he's he's you like frozen. that? Here he, he is. That. That's a, that's the shitty thing about you know just as comics. I mean, I, I have a joke in my act about it about how. You know, I do Chelsea lately all the time, and so I'm constantly shitting on people who are more successful than I am. Yeah, and yeah. so, and then I, I, I always feel a little bad. Like, I hope they understand that I'm just fucking around. Like, you know I, what? I don't, I don't know that that they do. I, I don't think I would. Like, when anyone says anything bad, you know, you're a person, and you're like, "Fuck you, that hurt my feelings." Yeah, you know? I just always feel like, how can anyone take anything the shipmates guy said seriously? You know what I mean? Like, I don't <laughs> feel like how could they really be like, "Oh, I feel taken down a peg." It was like I, I made fun of you know before. Um, before John Mayer revealed that his cock is Hitler in Playboy. Um, <laughs> wow. Wait, I missed that we part. We should talk about that. <laughs> he, made, he made some crack about how his, um, he has ne- he's never slept with a black woman that he thinks his cock is a white supremacist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I um, heard that. I was... and, then I think, and then I think he dropped the N-bomb a couple times. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. all that. Yeah. Last thing. Yeah. Um, so, but, but I, you know, months before it was even hip to make fun of him. Uh, <laughs> in fairness, it's you always were, been hip to been, make fun of John. Yeah. I, I made a joke about him on Chelsea Lately where I guess the story was he was at a steakhouse having a dinner and someone handed him a guitar so he just started playing songs for everybody. And the joke I said was, wow, I feel really bad for the cows. First they get killed and turned into steaks and then they sit through a John Mayer concert. <laughs> and then in the next day on Twitter, he was like, why are they so mean to me on Chelsea Lately? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think people find, I mean, it's very easy to find out about anything that is said about you. You know, I mean, you do a blog search of yourself on Google and you can see what every 11... <laughs> put an year, alert, a Google what alert. every 11-year-old says about you. Yeah. It's and terrible. It's, it's, that's the thing. It's always, it's always just kids. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, me and my friends used to make fun of Shit all the time growing up, but we didn't have the access to the internet to yeah. make it known. And you grew up on Hawaii, so it was just like, those are dumb coconuts. <laughs> you stupid coconuts. Nice those grass coconuts skirt. had it coming, I'll tell you. Nice 12-letter alphabet. <laughs> Gay coconuts. What is this, all vowels? Fuck that. This is stupid. Uh, I, I, just, uh, I, always feel, I just feel bad, though, because I know... It's funny, as a comic... You know, ten people can say really nice things about you, and then one person oh, yeah. you don't even know who they are no, is like, "You suck." And you're like, "What? What did I do?" Yeah, and yeah. You, just, you crumble. I was talking to Steve Agee about that, about Twitter specifically, and he was he was just saying that he'll just block anyone, yeah, <laughs> anyone yeah. that says anything. So empowering negative. to just yeah. be like, "Balak." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he's so. actually currently having a, a weird time with it because uh, him and Todd Berry started. A they Twitter have a war. war. Yeah, and then people started taking sides. Yeah, and it made <laughs> it's, it's Steve just. He's, he's like people are so mean. Yeah, he just yeah. couldn't handle. It. People were being brutal. I think to him. I think he and Todd are stopping their Twitter war because of that. <laughs> because yeah. pe- like fans of either or attack the other guy. You know, and it's so funny that we work in a profession where we fucking dish it out relentlessly, and then it's it's so hard to take it back. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. but I guess it's, it's one thing if it's you know if it's like if someone like you. That, I mean, like, you're Rob, you're hilarious. And so if you took a shot at me, I might be like, ah, fuck, that was really funny. I don't know why. Why are you making that face? Oh, no, I didn't know where you were going with this. No, I was going to say, <laughs> did you already take a shot at me? That I'm not gonna... Yeah, I hope you don't read what I wrote about. Oh, my God, that's this really embarrassing. He's been live tweeting this whole this thing. It's amazing <laughs> that you even agreed to come on the show. I just fucking show. took you down a notch, <laughs> yeah, bro. Damn. <laughs> Good one, Rob. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> it's just funny how high school it can be where someone can, if someone even just says, like, 
the letter U and then suck. Yeah, that's all the internet is. The internet is high school just continued on yeah. until however long you are still on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all it is. Like Twitter, Facebook, all of that is just high school. Yeah. You know? It just makes people feel closer than they actually are. Just it makes every acquaintance seem more like a friend because you're so familiar with the things they do all the time. Yeah. And it just it's the worst. And you but you totally invite <laughs> it. But you totally invite it when you're a comic. You totally invite yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Because, because you're shitty you're, about other things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, your job is to to make fun of stuff and to to to, to crap on as many things as you can crap on, but uh, unfortunately, that involves talking about real people who have real lives. Yeah, for the most part, though, that's why m- most of my most of my comedy has always just been making fun of myself. So, that's well, it. I just make Hitler jokes. That's all I do that's is make Hitler jokes. I just make fun of Antarcticans, those fucking mm-hmm. those glacier jumping fucking ice, backs. <laughs> ice backs. Ice backs. <laughs> Most of my stuff is just puppet work now, like <laughs> Jeff Dunham, because I just figure, you know, if I can speak through a puppet, it's just funnier. And it's not me saying it; it's right. my hilarious puppet. That's so, doing. so your puppets, you make fun of everyone. Do you also make fun of white Christians? Yep. Um. Uh, no. Wait. Oh, what? No. Well, yeah. You said no you said way. you make fun of everyone no, equally. No way. I'm with not your gonna, puppets. No. If in fact, well, if we even equally. start, if we even start to do that, I'm leaving. <laughs> well, I I'm just leaving. you you just said that it's okay to make fun of other races with your puppets. It is. You all the, the all the wrong races and wrong religions. <laughs> it's, oh. it's great to make fun of them. If you're not white, Protestant, you're wrong. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Like, You've with been everything. hearing a segment from uh, Rob Hubel's one-man show, The Jeff Dunham Story. <laughs> <laughs> I think they... Uh, I hope people know I'm kidding about that. Um, they, um, we'll cut they, that out. <laughs> <laughs> please cut that out. Please. <laughs> Rob Hubel <laughs> said <laughs> this. Please don't have people mark he, is, he believed it 100%. Remember the... My uh, girlfriend's black, so... <laughs> I have a friend who has a black girlfriend, so I'm totally good. <laughs> so that's um, two fake people you just made up. <laughs> uh, I saw a black Fucking person once. Zingers. <laughs> um, you had the, remember the uh, the dog, the bounty hunter, Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to a Halloween party and I was dressed as Dog the Bounty Hunter, and um, I got lost walking to the house, and so I ended up just walking back and forth up and down the street, and I was walking past. Um, one of the Orthodox Jewish like temples or whatever, and they were all they were all hanging out that night. There was like a party or something going on, like a Halloween. Did you party. just hang out and attend an Orthodox Jewish? Well, they were Jewish already temple. dressed in their Orthodox Jewish costumes, and they're like, "Hey, let's wear these." What are they gonna do? Go home and watch TV? Oh, <laughs> slam! They're not. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, I kept walking back and forth, dressed as full on Dog the Bounty Hunter, like wig, you know, the whole bit, leather chaps and everything, and everyone was just like ridiculing me, like it was just bad. The Orthodox Jews were ridiculing you? Um, yeah, I felt like I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and I just also looked um, weird, and it was also right when he had said all this racist stuff, and so there was also... <laughs> you forgot about that. You right? mean always? <laughs> I, I forgot that he said all this racist stuff, and I just thought, like, oh, he's a funny character, and so I'm dressed as this racist guy, and then also, like, a like a van a van full of, like, black guys drove by, and I was like, oh, this is how I die. This is the end of my life, you know? They don't understand, yeah, you, you kind of hope they understand. You can play it off as irony, like, oh, this guy's so ridiculous, I was just like, oh, I have to be this crazy racist guy because yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny. It's comedy. Yeah. You have to dress like this guy. I was just in uh, Austin, Texas, which is well, there is a huge hipster cluster there. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, are you gonna be at South by this year? I think I'm gonna go there. Yeah, are there people there that wear um, like cool um, plaid shirts and and stuff like that and like scruffy beards? Yes, and... they're vaguely Weezer esque. Okay, great. I, yeah, guys, yeah, I'm yeah, sitting there. right here. Oh, Jonah, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> hi, Jonah. So anyway, they wear these stupid like Mad Men glasses, and they. Uh... <laughs> oh, this is really awkward. It'd be neat if a whole town just suddenly started dressing like fifties. Like, just the whole town just bought into it. That would be really rad. Wow. I we should, that. Someone should do that. They, although, you know what's I happened What's there. happened in Austin is that they have... Um, Keeping it weird, right? It's they're, they're, Parts of it are keeping it weird, but then other parts have turned into this weird douchetopia. Like, that 6th Street... The Silver Lake? It, it, it's, no. It's Silver. like I saw a dude when I was walking through downtown. There was a dude with a faux hawk and Mardi Gras beads. And I'm like, well, wow. those two things just made each other... It, um, Infinitely worse yeah. together, <laughs> and it's not like some of the some of the hipsters have moved out of that malt that that kind of pub crawl that space. Area, of yeah. Sixth. Well, the, the hipster, the original hipsters there that really like brought up that recent scene of you know the blow up of history. Like they they're all starting to move out into the neighborhoods. They're getting so older. Starting, yeah, exactly. Getting so houses. Now, now it's time them. for the people who were inspired by uh, people who were into ironic culture. So now it just seems <laughs> it's like a double fake thing. 
Uh, I saw two guys at, uh, I was at Garage Pizza the other night, and there was these two really douchey guys talking. They're like, what do you want to do? Well, Adam says we're all going to go to 4100 tonight. And the guy's like, man, that's DB Central. What do you mean? That's douchebag. The place is full of douchebags. I've never seen two bigger douchebags in my <laughs> life not want to go to a 4100 bar because it's full of douchebags. They're like robots. They lack self-awareness. Yeah. <laughs> that's the problem with douchebags. Yeah. They can be easily programmed, but they lack self-awareness. And once they do retain that self-awareness, it is dangerous for all of us. Maybe I like that bar. I think that bar is cool. Does that mean I'm a douchebag? Well, yes. That I am a douchebag, but that's not what makes me a douchebag. Is it because you want you want to start another bar called Pussy High Five, where <laughs> anyone goes Pussy High Five? Oh, I'm Dude, there. if there were a bar called Pussy High Five, that would be awesome. You want to? I will start a bar called Pussy <laughs> High Five. <laughs> let's please start that bar. Let's let's try to get a douchebag collective to get together and chase all the hipsters out and just just like watch them go to cultural war. Yeah, I really want. There's a there's a bar right near my my house. <laughs> Silver Lake, uh, it's it's Rough Trade or no, it's La Bar, La Bar Cita. It's a gay bar. It's a leather daddy bar, and I just it, but it's the only. It's a leather daddy bar. You know, they're just mustaches, leather, and hair. Is and that they're someone's dad? Is that they have to be someone's father? Leather daddy, you know. Children. So, yeah, they got they just got the straps and. and I don't know the different categories of gay people. I know like bears. Yeah, this is, they they can be considered bears in a way. There's okay. bears and cubs. Yeah. What's a cub? I think the cub is the little guy that likes to date the bear. Like the bear protects him. Okay. There's, it's there's, a kind of a my bodyguard dynamic. Oh, there's that's twinks a good movie. too. Twinks are the uh, What's ones a twink? that they look like they could be underage. Now that's pretty inside knowledge. Yeah. I didn't know that, Matt. Well, I work right next to West Hollywood. So oh, so you know. The... So. And I once accidentally went to Provincetown on Bear Week, which was odd. So you were Acc- very popular then, huh? Acc- I was. Accidentally. <laughs> yeah, you're very bearish. Yeah. I found wow. that out. Are you available for uh, uh, some some type of cub link? Uh, cub. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pose for a calendar. All right, we'll yeah. do the Nerdist calendar. Yeah, if you want, maybe the bear. My friend Preston is a kind of a bigger, hairier dude. That... Preston, <laughs> <laughs> your friend <of> Preston. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he, you know, gets wasted and at, at, at the, the yacht club. <laughs> If you see this guy, he is quite the opposite of trying his name. to keep those townies down. <laughs> just kind of the townies. Uh, but he, uh, he, you know, a lot of pictures of him at parties, which just is like getting wasted, taking his shirt off, and then <laughs> some. For some reason, he's starting to find himself on these gay porn sites, or just like you know, <laughs> wow. bear sites where he's just he like. There's a following of guys like that love his pictures. Wow. I'd be kind of honored. You know, for some reason I'm weirdly. More complimented if some if someone on Twitter is gay and they're like, "Hey, you're hot." I kind of feel like yeah. I feel like gay people are more selective. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. offended like, by that. I feel like gay people like like cooler thing, not necessarily cooler things, but at least like you know you're a better dresser than like <laughs> yes. Oh, good. Yeah. At least I'm I'm dressing well. Yeah, I completely agree. So, gays, if you're out there and uh, you like us, let us know on Twitter. What's that called? What's what's that called? Straight guys that that appreciate the appreciation of gay dudes. I think that's called this show. <laughs> mm. I think that's what that's called. Um, I uh, I was at the airport this morning when I flew I flew back in from Austin and I, it's today's Valentine's Day. I don't know when this is gonna go up, but let's. I think everyone understands that this is not live. This is streaming live on iTunes. <laughs> we ruined, all in now. We ruined two people that were thinking it was um, live. So uh, I was in the bathroom at LAX and there was this dude on the phone the whole time, and uh, and he was talking to his girlfriend. He was like. I'm gonna pick up some flowers on the way home so I can keep the home fires burning. Wow! And and but the whole time he was like he walked into the bathroom, went up to the urinal, took his dong out in one hand, peed the whole time. He was like, "I'm gonna bring home some flowers because you deserve the best. I'm gonna get a huge bouquet." But he was going on the whole time. His dick was in his hand. Was it Yosemite Sam? It was Yosemite <laughs> Sam, uh, and he was upset with that wascally wabbit who he was gonna bring flowers home oh, to. You deserve the best. You deserve the best. Oh, who, that's a kind of a like a dumb thing to do. Just telling it. I'm gonna get you flowers. I'm gonna hu- come home and bring you flowers. And don't you want to surprise the lady? Well, I don't know anything about women. It was weird that it was. He was so earnest about it. He's cheating on her. That's what that <laughs> that's what's happening. <laughs> yeah, he in was the like, bathroom yeah, at LAX. He was yeah he with was, a twink. Yeah, yeah. If you <laughs> have a, a if you have a husband that randomly just goes, I love you so. I love much. you so out of nowhere. Much. Most likely, he just fucked another girl. I just need you. I just need to tell you, I love you so much. Yeah. Unsolicited, <laughs> unsolicited for no reason. Oh, who covered? Just out of thin air. <laughs> who covered our bed in rose petals? <laughs> 
<laughs> must be the man that loves you. It is so true. Yeah, that means um, he's cheating. We have him. not had a dinner together in four months. I know, but I, know. I love you so much. <laughs> I just need you to know that right now. You smell like another woman's privates. I know, but I love you. It was a test. It was a test I took to make sure I still love you so much. I went to Pussy High Five last night. <laughs> and you can't go to Pussy High Five without Pussy and High Fives. You can't. I would love this. Let's make Pussy High Five like the old uh, Chuck E. Cheese. And we'll just have like animatronic. Uh, <laughs> pussy Five band. Pussy, yeah. Just like animals. The pussy like, fi- the pussy objectified fire animals. The pussy fire objectified rats with their tits out. All six tits. All six objectified <laughs> All six. rat tits. Uh, playing, playing, Hardwick, uh, did you live in New York ever? I can't remember. Right, we lived there for like six months. Oh, Jonah, did you live there? I lived there for about three months. Oh, well, they have this huge inflatable rat that they put out um, that, like, the labor unions put out whenever there is this, uh, whenever they're protesting, like, if a construction site is going on and it's like they're using non union guys, Mm -hmm. the union guys will come down and put this huge, terrifying, like, inflatable rat, like, right in front of the construction site. And they'll sit there and they'll march around it and stuff like that. But it, whatever you just said about the rat made me think about that. It was like the fucking scariest thing. I bet and it like, works too. Yeah, That's it works because like dudes don't want to show up for work if there's all these like union construction workers around protesting them and this gigantic. It's an inflatable rat with like evil eyes and like blood coming out of his mouth. Oh my god! And like I think even like a hard dick, like he's that is he's a really a, that is really oh, far. Shit. I don't think he has a hard dick, but he it is scary. And they we're but gonna I, put a fucking dick in its mouth with the tendons hanging out, like it's gonna bite off. The I, dick. Yeah, there he is. Oh my god, that's horrifying. <laughs> that's horrifying. Yeah, they put him everywhere. Uh, there's non-union labor going on, so we're looking at a picture on it. Where on did the you internet. find that picture? I just uh, Google searched inflatable rat union. Yeah, <laughs> and it comes right up. It, yeah, Kate was the it's first thing so that came scary. up. It's so scary. I don't see it out in LA very much. I wish it were out here. It's pretty awesome. No, here we just have the text protesters where they hold up those signs that say "Shame on yeah, yeah Lieberman yeah. and Lieberman yeah, yeah, yeah. Law Firm." Yeah, and yeah. then these two people who people honk. But I love the fact that that feels so uh, Pilgrim Times to me, where like people are professional shame casters. Yeah, and that's their profession. Yeah, I feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna cast shame, you might as well do it in an aggressive way and have a really cool inflatable, terrifying thing to do that with. You know, reason number eight hundred and four. New York's cooler than L.A. Hey. <laughs> They don't cast so many reasons. They cast yeah. shame the like pussies rats. in L.A. Oh, words. Yeah, I'm really hurt by words. That's not a rat with blood coming out of his fucking mouth. Did you miss Did New York, no? Rob? Um, I I miss New York periodically. This time of year, I don't miss New York at all. There, you know, it's freezing cold and everyone's about ready to kill themselves. But um, I love L.A. I mean, I, I you know I moved out here when uh, when there was like a big exodus from New York and a bunch of my comedy friends moved out here. So um, so I, I love it out here. But um, but New York is it's hard to beat. You know, it's a it's a fun, it's a great city a and, and a lot place. of people a lot of people really I mean I feel like I mean a lot of comics in New York are like. L.A. fucking sucks. And then six months later, you see them out here. And like, what are you doing in L.A. if you hate it? Pilot season. Yeah. Like, yeah, they, all, yeah. they all get sucked out here sooner yeah. or later. I think I'm, it, it, a lot of resentment comes uh, like toward L.A. is just from people having to be here for certain reasons. Right, right, right. For you work know, they, stuff. They don't want to yeah. have to be here. I don't want to have to be anywhere. But, you know, they have to be well, people, here. Like, when people say L.A. sucks, and I go, well, yeah, every city sucks. You yeah. just find the pockets that you like, and you live in them. Yeah. Like, and yeah. L.A. has tons of awesome pockets. Yeah, yeah there's, there's great I, stuff. I really, I really love this city. I never thought I would as much as I do now. But And I'm, I'm from, you know, a, a temperate climate type of area in Hawaii, you know. But this place is just great. There's like neighborhood after neighborhood of just cool different things you can John do. Ray, Silver Lake, <laughs> go now. Silver Lake, <laughs> Lake. Lake. West Hollywood, Brentwood, seeing twinks, I love, I love Santa Monica, <laughs> and the douchebags in their flashy cars. I love all parts of LA. I love Silver Lake. I love Los Feliz, Echo Park, all different parts of LA. Well, those, those parts are all adjacent. I'm sorry, what? That's one area. No, that it's you just, there's separation. No, I don't um, think so. You don't so. love all parts. It seems like you love one small. Part. There's one no, section no, no. that's connected. Oh, and then there's that one area uh, between Silver Lake and Echo Park. Well, again, that's right in the middle. That's encased yeah. by all those other areas. I don't it's see called the hipster town. Yep. <laughs> I've lived all over. I've lived in Santa Monica, San Pedro. I love <laughs> He loves 
it. <laughs> That's the worst song ever recorded. It yeah. really was just. It really was just built around that line. What? what it, the chorus was like, "Look at those cars. Look at that highway. <laughs> Look at those fucking cars. Look at the fucking highway." That was just Something. everything he was experiencing that day. Yeah. Yeah. Got in my car. Yeah. Drove to the store. <laughs> bought some bananas. I got a couple more. Like, all yeah, right, Santa Ana winds blowing hot from the north. Was that really Randy Newman? It was Randy Newman. Wow. And doesn't he do like the most amazing songs for movies and stuff? Yeah. He does all, uh, basically Pixar. Every time there's a Pixar movie. Every amazing song, but then that one song was crazy. Wasn't that a parody song? Like, didn't he sort of do that tongue in cheek? Mm. Did you ever hear the parody (laughs) of that song, though? It was a small part in the Run, Ronnie, Run movie. Or uh, Daffy Mel Yink and Yankle, which was their weird character. It's like, I loathe L.A. (laughs) (laughs) But I think it's a, I think it's tongue in cheek, which makes it funny when they play that at Lakers games, and everyone's like, "Yeah, yeah. L.A. smog, we love it. <laughs> We're gonna ride after this if we win. Like, we love it." Line there says, "Look at that bum over there. He's down on his knees." That reminds me, and I'm gonna tell the story because I'm solipsistic, and everything always comes back to me. But um, when Furman and I did perform, this congratulations song. on the word solipsistic. By oh, the way. thank you very much. I don't, I don't know what that means. But. It means that basically there is no reality outside my own experience, so everything it literally revolves around me. There and nothing me else has any There reminds me of the time you did something else that you're. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we, we performed this song. We have this fake Toby Keith song called American Dinosaur as we performed it on Kimmel. And um, whenever we got to the America parts, people went fucking bananas. And we're like, guys, there's dinosaurs. Like, it's a fake Toby Keith song, you know? But <laughs> we were like, American. And people were like, what? <laughs> and then dinosaurs and then they checked out by that point yeah well, they were expecting to say American Jesus <laughs> American yeah. Jesus he was a, I mean listen he was a, clearly a white guy flaxen haired living in the Middle East yeah you know blue eyes mm-hmm yeah, you damn right he was. Damn right he was. <laughs> You're <laughs> damn right he was, man. He was white, <laughs> super white, and blonde, damn white, and tan, and handsome, <laughs> and cool. Had a six pack. Yeah. Yep. That's a Greg Barrett joke. Ripped like Jesus. Oh yeah. He was ripped like Jesus. <laughs> Greg Barrett. Hopefully, a future guest on the Nerdist podcast. Hey. I don't know what you feel uncomfortable talking about future guests on here, Rob. Yeah, that feels like that a already... diss to me. Like we already want to get rid of me. Guys, we're already, let's talk, let's we're talk about what we're on Rob talk. looking ahead. When is oh, the wait, show going to? What should gonna we be talk like? about when Greg Barrett? Yeah, Greg's going to be really great. Oh, oh I really cool. such a great album. When is the show? Shut up, Rob. Like that thing he wears on his wrist. That's not a bracelet, but it's thicker. It's thicker. I'm confused about what the format of this show is. Has the show already started? You're in it. No, actually, we're not recording any of this. Okay. This is just to uh, piss off anyone who uh, will leave comments on the uh, iTunes page. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I'm so... Uh, I, I didn't read... I don't read them. I don't read them either. You, you can't. No. You can't. I'm I read so them all. terrified. I love it. Did you really? Yeah. But well, it's because we were like, it sucks. Well, there's not that many. Don't get, I'm, I don't mean to. I, I'm glad I, the I, first example you pulled out was, <laughs> no, because everyone's like, it's terrible. No, no, not what everyone. What a waste there's of only, technology. There's like, there's like three three uh, bad ones, and I'm sure after this there will be many more. Well, <laughs> again, Jonah. That's... No, 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 no. No, one, so no one's going to say anything I'm, bad I'm about me, myself. man. Uh, no one's going to say anything except bad Except for the guy who me. directed Frozen. Oh, boy. <laughs> How do you like it, motherfucker? <laughs> I don't even know if he's foreign. <laughs> well, just they, they, it's, uh, they, there was one guy just like, they were just talking. <laughs> they were just, <laughs> just talking on the podcast with words, and uh, wow, this, you know. so that, that's that's American though. That's a very American point of view. Like I, I did a pilot once that was adapted from a British show, and the British show was called The People Versus, and the whole idea of the show was that this that the guy would sit at a desk with a little like a, a bell. And people would come out and just talk about whatever they wanted. Any, it didn't matter. Whatever they wanted, they could talk about. And he would engage them. When he was done, he would hit the bell and they'd leave. So we did the American version. It was like, we, well, this has to be this segment. And this needs to be. It was yeah, yeah. so overstructured that people just don't appreciate. Like, yeah, we're just talking. Yeah. Like, people talk. Well, yeah. what do they do on most podcasts? I mean, are there like, uh, well, I don't you know, know Doug, he talks about movies. Doug talks about movies. But it's uh, talking. Yeah, he's, he's talking. talking. He, and they, you know, divert into, let's just make this a podcast about I'm saying I want, a, all, <laughs> I want it to be an all-musical <laughs> podcast. Yeah, what do yeah. they do? We, yeah. should, we should have explosions on this podcast. Michael Bay presents the Nerdist Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, we, should, we should perform surgery on baby animals. Okay. Like the do- or like the dog you found? We could perform surgery yeah. on the dog you found? Well, it's already oh. dead. But it's frozen. He's not dead. He's probably, I'm telling you, he's destroying my house right now. I bet Have you, you named him? 
No, because he's not mine. I, I I can't get to attach him because someone's someone's gonna come get him. I'm sure. I hate to break this to you. You're already attached to him, yeah. and it's gonna be a teary you goodbye. Spent money. It you're is already, gonna be a teary You goodbye. probably already gave him a name. They're gonna come and get him, and I'm gonna blow my head off. <laughs> Right, like right in front of them as they leave. This out. is what you want. <laughs> Just the image of the dog with blood splattering on its face. Yeah, Just winces. Not to make you more on. deep into wanting the dog, but what would you name it? And what oh, have you probably man. already named it in your head? I don't know. You should I go don't... through a book of dog names and see which one it reacts to. Oh, Just that's to a good find idea. Its real name. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I would like to name him something either really feminine because he's a scary looking German Shepherd. So I would like to do that or. Go the other way and just name him something super scary, like you know, Satan or. Uh, <laughs> can I uh, can I just throw out a suggestion? Yeah, uh, name him Tracy Gold, because I really liked her. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Growing Pains. <laughs> it will be Tracy Gold from Growing Pains. Tracy, you read, the, the full name is Tracy Gold from Growing. That's Pains. the other yeah. thing to do is to give your dog a really long name. So when kids, when little kids, are like, oh, what's his name? His name is Tracy Gold from Growing Pains. <laughs> like you have to say the Tracy Gold, aka Carol from Growing Pains. <laughs> Her name is Carol, right? Uh, I was in seventh grade. Our family got a, a dachshund, a little miniature wiener dog, and uh, I named it uh, Duke. And then my mom was like, oh, it's great. I was like, no, 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 you, you got to let me finish. His name is Duke Lexington of the Orion, because you got to give him a knight's name, because he's such a dumb-looking dog. Boy, are you on the right podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a party the other night, and um, I won't be able to recount this theory correctly, but Hardwick, maybe you've heard of this. Um, someone told me that they've been doing all this research into black holes, and um, that they have this theory now that black holes don't even exist. They're just like reflections that yeah. sort of like show up and then go away or whatever. And then so um, I, haven't, I haven't done all the research, but, and I was sort of drunk when they were explaining this to me, but it basically blew my mind. So the, a there's, party a, where you at? there's a theory now. There's all these old physicists. No, <laughs> we're hanging out there, at there's JPL a, dorms. There's a theory now that what we are is actually reflections of, like, we're not actually here. This has actually happened millions of years ago. And what we're experiencing is, um, is this, is this, situation where we're all um, two-dimensional reflections of intense light that happened somewhere else really far away and it went through like a black hole and then it, we, it just but it happened there but you know millions of years ago but we're but we're this is just playing out what if i just started throwing up really hard <laughs> oh, the reality of this is too much for my brain That's, to bear I, I like that i like the sound of that it seems right but then i thought well then why do farts smell like you know, and and, and they said, well, Sense because memory? we're two dimensional. You know, you there's you you still have thoughts, and you know everything you're experiencing is real, but it just happened millions of years ago, and it's just being reflected through that fart. Uh, started two million years ago on Alpha Centauri, and the smell is just getting to you now. Wow! And that's how that's how that's how long it ta- a fart year is. How long it takes a fart to travel in a year? Yeah, it's all measured in fart years. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Fantastic! I love that. I love the. You know, it's funny. I'm always surprised at conversations that break out at parties. That all of a sudden, I was I was at a party and someone was telling me, "Oh, it was." uh, I'm not name dropping because I don't really know him that well. Here comes a name, Dave Foley. Oh boy! And we were talking. Who? Dave Foley. Never heard. K I T H. (laughs) Kids in the hall, and Uh, and the poker show. The (laughs) poker. I don't know what it's called. Dave Foley from the poker show. Poker Poker show. show. Poker show Foley. (laughs) <laughs> um, and he was telling me because he loves physics and so he was telling me about uh, he was the first person that ever told me about super string theory and, substring, and, and and so we were in the middle of this conversation and this drunk douchey guy came up and he was like man there's no super strings it's all bullshit <laughs> but his character completely was opposite what you would expect <laughs> that guy to <laughs> refute super string yeah. theory when he was trying to tell me about this book that this guy Brian Green wrote so it was just really weird and I'm like, am I in the part? Am I really at this party right now? <laughs> so maybe, maybe the reflection from that experience had been toyed with. Um, it might have, yeah, Doctor Who. that that might have been altered. Um, speaking of Dave Foley and so, what was the name of that show? Celebrity Poker or whatever. Celebrity yeah. Poker. Yeah, I one time the, you're talking about pilots. You did. I did a terrible pilot for um, for Bravo that they actually aired one time and then they took it off the air. I was the oh, this is the fucking worst. I was the host of a show called Celebrity Pool, where they actually had people playing pool, and you know they were like kind of. And I don't know the most interesting game to watch. 
Yeah, I kind of just really hoped it was watch. just celebrities in a pool. <laughs> that would have been for a <laughs> half hour. This was me and this woman, this this really hot Asian woman, the Black Widow, who's this hot oh, yeah. pool player. Yeah, and um, and then they had all <laughs> Wait, these. What? I know. Oh, the Black Widow. I yeah. watch ESPN too a lot. Okay. And then they had these, um, like Joe Rogan playing pool and Harlan Williams and and all. In fact, Joe Rogan won. I remember, but I was terrible. I was like, oh, what am I do? I'm a terrible host. Like you're good at hosting stuff. I was terrible, but. It was so embarrassing. I have a VHS tape of it. And Are you ever going to show it at shit? Oh, by the way, I want to plug Rob Hubel has a monthly show at UCB in LA called Shit Show, and oh. it's fucking phenomenal. You basically, I've done a couple times, you go on and you bring clips from the worst things you've ever worked on, the and then sh- everyone just shits on it. The shittiest thing you've ever done, you have to have show. Have you shown it. that yet? Um, I've never shown that. There's a couple things that I'm holding out on, but now, like, I've done the show, we've been doing the show for about six months. And uh, and so now I'm running out of like other shitty things. So I'm like, oh god, these things that I was too afraid to show. Like now I have to show them. They're going nice. deep into the Hubel yeah, archives. Celebrity pool, man. Oh fuck, it was so bad. I was terrible, and it just it was just no one wants to watch pool. I, I would have said the same thing about poker, though. If you had said, I, I, well, yeah, we're going to put a show of people playing cards, and you know, yeah. there's like a Filipino guy with a rattlesnake skin hat and sunglasses. And sunglasses and like, That's ridiculous. Yeah. And it's and like it is. poker is hu- it is. Do people but still watch it. <laughs> They do. They still do? I think they do. Like, people are poker fanatics. Yeah. It's gotten better since the whole cam. Like, before you didn't even see what cards they had. So it was just a bunch of people guessing. <laughs> just people Oh, that sounds circle. like bullshit, man. It was like Dick Van Patten guessing. He would host the <laughs> poker tournament. I'm not even kidding. By the way, since we're on the topic of Dick Van Patten, it, next time <laughs> you're in the... Pull your dicks out. N- yep, pull, pull your dicks out and, and then start patting them. Um, the next time you're in, I apologize for that. I hate myself right now. I like uh, that joke. I the next time you're in a pet store, look for the Dick Van Patten dog. I saw food. him. You I see saw it? that. So I was like, going to say, what is that? The one where it's Dick Van like, Patten has a brand of dog. food. He has a brand of dog food, and all these like weirdly kind of racist. One's, one's in a little labels. tube or something. It's like a little one looked like a, a balloon or like something you could put in your butt. Not that everything has to go in your butt in a pet Again, store. you said butt plugs There's for dogs. There's a lot of things and... that fit in your butt that happen to be in a pet store. But um, <laughs> and, I'm just out of curi- curiosity, um, if you were to measure that in fart ears. Uh, <laughs> in fart ears, it's probably two fart ears. Okay. Yeah. All right. But yeah, what's, why does Dick Van Patten have his own um, line of pet food? And why do we know who Dick Van Patten is? Eight is enough. But no one listening yeah. to this podcast knows what the fuck that <laughs> really sound well, like. Well, then maybe up, they'll Google it and learn it something. It's not like you were setting up a real bad joke. Why does Dick Van Patten have his own brand yeah, of dog no, food? No, there's no punchline. I think he must have been like, no, for stuff, oh, Newman's got the popcorn ass. and the pasta. I'm going to get the dog food. Yeah. And, it and seems it, like Bob Barker would do that, though. You know, like put his name on. Cause, because of Barker? Because of Barker? Yeah, spayed a neutering dog. No. Yep. Oh, yeah. wait. Is that why he's involved with pets? Because his last name is Barker? Yeah, he was. He was, he was. was. his name forced him into that uh, Into that like. That's not true. I went to my dry cleaners one time, and they had a once, and they had a <laughs> uh, a headshot of Bob Barker, and his headshot is like him with like four dogs like in his lap, and mm. I wondered like, do they does he go into five the, if you include the boner? They, <laughs> does he go into the dry cleaner and then they, I don't I never know how that works in L A. Like when you see a place with a lot of headshots on the wall, and it's like Tommy Delfini, yeah, and it's but some do guy they with do they the have them <laughs> with them, or did the people say, oh, would you mind mailing us a headshot? I think it's something it. to the effect of that. I'd imagine they bring them. I think they bring them. They they're carrying it like, hey, just picking up my stuff, and here's a signed yeah. headshot. Listen, no, I think they ask. You what? I think they ask and then they get the place. Mailed. The they're restaurant probably, says, "Can you send us?" A they're probably shot? regulars. They go in there all the time and they see that there's a pre-existing headshot thing, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, can I bring mine?" And then yeah. they just put them up. Can I bring to be them? to be nice? But was I was it? thinking that like if this dry cleaner is like, they must have to get a lot of cum stains out of Bob Barker's clothes. You yeah, dog, yeah. Doggy cum stains. Just yeah, from, yeah, yeah. You know, just from him humping. No, no, he legs. spays and neuters them. They can't come anymore. Oh, that's mm-hmm. a good point. Yeah. Well, how does he keep there his teeth no, so white? He, then? He's. He, oh, wow. Good callback. Acknowledge that. that. Good joke. callback to someone earlier. Write that when one, we brushed someone our teeth. write that one down. <laughs> Dog dick paste. Is it me? Do I make things filthy? I don't mean It's to be me. Filthy. It's my fault. I have my I have a fifteen year old sense of humor. But back to Bob Barker, vanquisher of dog cum. Um, <laughs> that's his goal is to just make sure that dogs don't have a good time. That's basically what he's saying every time. It's like, hey dogs, you know how sex feels good? I'm gonna fuck that up. I'm gonna ruin that for you. Yeah. Even though you're animals and it's your only pleasure center besides <laughs> your mouth, I'm gonna take it away. And then and here, here's how to sew up your mouth. Here's a sticker you can put on your butthole. Get out of here. <laughs> here's, a, here's a sticker you can put where your balls used to be that says vacant. <laughs> and then, uh, I'm, I'm sure Bob Barker. Barker I'm sure Bob Barker is a nice guy. He's a big fan of this podcast. He loves this podcast. He <laughs> he loves it. 
He absolutely loves this podcast. So I'm sorry to Bob Barker. Bob Barker's <laughs> going to be one of the ones that posts on iTunes. Yeah. This podcast is bullshit. And then Wait, we'll so, see yeah. so let's talk about Valentine's Day. Um, Jonah, what are you going to do on Valentine's Day? I'm doing it right now. This, this is, is it. it? This is all I got. What about I might... tonight? No romance? No mm-hmm. ladies? No, no. I guess so. Maybe I might go watch a movie with a lady. A pornographic movie? No, probably a zombie movie or something. Zombie porn? Zombie no, movie. no, probably just a, just a nerdy movie to watch. What or about... I might go... Uh, Get drunk and take pictures with Steve Agee. What about the movie Valentine's Day? Why not go see That's that? That's got something for everyone because there's there's a, every star in there must be someone that someone likes, right? Oh, for a second, I totally forgot about the new movie Valentine's Day. I thought, I was like, is that a horror movie? No, Valentine's that... Day, like April Fool's Day or something. Oh yeah, what was that? Because I went to see a movie last year in three. My bloody Valentine. My bloody 3D. Valentine. That yes. was a, a ridiculous. Yeah. 3D movie. The that... best part was the the pickaxe from the back and the eyeball just pokes out at the end. Yeah, that was a 3D movie where they they did that retroactively. They shot that movie and they're like, "This is crap. How do we make it profitable? Let's go back and shoot like two 3D scenes." Yeah, it literally had like two scenes in it. No one even knows what I'm talking about because no one saw this. I saw movie. the movie. It's for you and me, Rob. Okay, me and you. Um, <laughs> but this other movie, Valentine's Day, looks great. Should have been in 3D too. Should have been in three. Every see movie George should be in 3D. Lopez in three D. So bad. I want to see Julie Roberts in three D. Yeah. I want to see Taylor Lautner. <laughs> I want to see his abs in three D. In three D. Just like because they're just like right in your mouth and be like ah. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. This is weird. Today I saw one of the best male bodies on the street <laughs> in my life. I Are almost you doing a bit right now. No, I was no. driving. I was driving uh, near Palos Verdes and I saw this dude with the craziest. Was it bricks. me? What was, was it you? It no. Was it no. this? Those bricks was right that right there? Oh, oh my god! Bricks? It was just incredible. I just I was wowed by. Uh, the... Did you shout anything out the, the window? Wait, what? You, you, what do you mean? Him? You were driving and you saw a guy walking down. Just the street. walking down the street without a shirt you on. Know, I was just driving around the park in circles at three in the morning. Um, <laughs> I was in Griffith Park cruising <laughs> around, uh, like you do, like I do, like one does. And he, and he had a shirt off. And he just had the greatest body I've ever seen in real life. Oh, wow. Wow. Do you think that he... Yeah, I know. That's what I said. Wow. I normally don't have good gaydar, but right now it's uh, <laughs> buried the needle. <laughs> Do you I... think that he works hard for that body or he was just born with that body? Ah, uh, he seems to have worked hard. He seemed boring. I'm... I don't... Let's move on. No, Hardwick... let's talk about how you're going to go see Valentine's Day with this guy you saw walking around a park. <laughs> just for the record, Hardwick just took a sip out of a, a bowl. Of to be fair, there are drinking, no cups. He's drinking water out of a bowl. There are no cups, and in a pinch, a, a, a rhomboid bowl, a square-shaped bowl, uh, has a corner that you can sip out of, so I'm drinking out of a bowl. All right? Seems in honor primitive. of the dog that hopefully you won't have to give back. Seems very, very primitive. Mm. Okay, so um, Hardwick, what are you going to do on Valentine's Day? Um, tonight, uh, my girlfriend Janet's birthday is Tuesday, so, uh, tonight we're gonna have some, uh, just a couple people over for dinner. Oh, Celebrate. what time should I be there? Um, like, uh, 3130. 30. Mm-hmm. I don't, is that military time? Yep, that's military time. It's only 24 time. hours in a day, so yep. that's not even yep, on that's, the... That's so go tomorrow. Military. Go tomorrow. Space, space military. Space military. Special ops. It's fart years. It's in fart years. Um, so you guys are gonna have a, a romantic couples dinner? It, wait, this sounds like, a group fuck situation yep it's gonna be a birthday orgy like you do on your girlfriend's birthday um, that would be awesome if that actually happened if like your girlfriend was like i have a present for you i want you to invite all of our friends over and let's have sex with them <laughs> let's, what group fuck. That's a pre- is that a present for me i don't it would be terrifying that happened what are you to my, doing, right? that happened to my little brother my little brother was um he my little brother is married now but he and his wife, one time, they were trying to like make couple friends with this other couple. And they're really like into this other couple. They thought they were just like funny and smart, and they were hanging out and everything. And one night they were driving home from some restaurant where they all went and, and were eating and drinking, and and then the couple like just was like out of nowhere. They were like, "Hey, can we? Uh, can I ask you a question? How would you guys like to get fucked by us?" <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> like, weird grammar. First yeah, of all, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's exactly how they put it. But how would y'all like, like to get fucked by us? Yeah. And my little brother was like. Err! You get out! You get the <laughs> hell out of this minivan! <laughs> and then the, they, they they probably just stand on the road like, well, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. So like you're gonna get oh, rejected. Well, honey, yeah, you that's... ask a bunch of couples, one of them eventually. You know, in the in the swinging biz, yeah. someone's gonna you know, ten no's is worth the yes. I'm telling you, yeah, I guess that's how it works. I guess you just have to like put it out there. You gotta go out on that limb. Yeah. yeah. Um, what what you, did, you ask me what am I? I'm not I, doing anything. I'm going to make love to this this German Shepherd. He's going to stay home with the Shepherd. Send him home with a baby. I think so. Um, yeah, I mean, 
Uh, yeah, I don't really have any plans. You guys just want you want to hang out? Uh, no. All right. It seems like that would be depressing. <laughs> yes, it will be. You're a guy I'm surprised that you makes... don't want to hang out with a guy who's just talking about the rock hard bricks he saw from the dude walking why can't the you, Why can't I just admire a good body? You make designs out of post it notes on your wall. <laughs> I didn't do that. Jonah did that. It, I, yeah. It seems it's, depressing. It's not depressing. I, I livened up the room a bit. Jonah's a really good Tom Servo, to be fair. Thank you. Jonah, do you know a lot of people in porn? I know uh, just the the one. That, just that's your only friend. Yeah, just Dana. Yeah. Okay, I know her too through yeah. you. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. She, she shot your incredible Christmas music video. Yeah. Yeah. She shot it, directed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was in it. Um, I thought that that video came out really well. Thanks, Jonah. That was a great job you did on that video. Thanks, guys. On the All I Want for Christmas video. You know, it's, it, why don't we wait till next Christmas? Why don't we make a Valentine's one? <laughs> it's, yeah, we'll have just about enough time. <laughs> yeah, we could. Oh, now it's too late. No, it's not too late. We can still do it and put it out tonight. <laughs> to the time machine! Hey! We need to go back 30 fart years! <laughs> uh, yeah, she's the only girl I know. And I feel like Steve Agee knows a lot of people in porn. Yeah, he knows uh, Belladonna and yeah. some of those other ones. The thing is, I knew Dana. It's not like I met her when she was doing porn. I met her... Uh, I knew her when she, she was... was just fucking guys for no money. Yeah. For no <laughs> money. Uh, yeah, we just... Um, that's Actually, Chris met her then, too. This was She is super years funny, ago. by the way. She is super yeah, funny. I really I like, do, I don't, do. I, there's something, though, like, I, I can't um, understand, like, at what... In, in your brain, when do you go... When do you wake up and go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing it. Like, uh, start. For her, she said it was a gradual process. <laughs> I don't know. So what, you okay, start stripping first, and then you're like, oh, well, I'm making money doing this. I might as well. Yeah. It's just, huh. you know, it's easy for them. I guess it is. We should have her on. She did Marin's podcast. Yeah, that's I right. I guess she was great. Yeah, yeah. She's a, she's a delight. We're going to have her on. Dana Diarmond. Great. Now let's mention other people that you're more excited to have on besides <laughs> me. Dana is going to be so awesome. Oh, guys, can you podcast. imagine? We'll have oh, her on after Great. Great. We're going to ask uh, her. She's not going to be talking about some dumb dog she picked no, up on the street. It would be so refreshing to have good guests on. Uh, what, <laughs> Rob? Um, do you... Uh, Rob, do you have any shows coming up that you want to plug? Or you're on Chil- Chil- Children's Hospital right now, which um, is phenomenal. Yeah, we're phenomenal. shooting the second season of Children's Hospital uh, for Adult Swim that I'm really psyched about. And um, yeah, me and Cordry and Ken Marino and Malin Ackerman and Nick Kroll and Henry Winkler and a bunch of people. Megan Mullally. It's going to be super fun. Um, but I mean, that's TV can, stuff. Can you give but... away the thing that you told me about? Yeah, whatever. Uh, what what part was it? Oh, the, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a uh, the other day. I had an awesome hardcore makeout scene with um, Mrs. Cunningham from Happy Days, Marion Ross, who is eighty two years old, and uh, who Henry Winkler also used to make out with. Did he re- in real life? Yeah, in real life. They dated. No, I think you're thinking of um, the Brady's. The Brady. I think no, you're, no. You're thinking of Greg Brady dated Marion Ross. No, from... no, no. I'm I'm pretty sure I saw some uh, blooper reels where they uh, they messed up and then they just started making out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, I made out with her on Monday, and she's 82 years old, and she has very soft lips, and it was actually charming. I was worried mentally. I was like, oh, boy, I don't know if I can do this. And then, you know, once you do it, a lady is a lady, and uh, it was it was fantastic. <laughs> a lady I I, is a lady. I don't know if that's offensive or complimentary. No, I mean it. A lady is a lady. I mean it as a compliment. It sounds like a, it's, I, I sound like a meathead, but... Um, will you be, uh, will be dating, dating any her? other octogenarians? Um, well... Like, did it open up the possibility for you to, like, you know what? I could roll with this. No. no absolutely not. Um, but it did open up a possibility of, like, oh, when I'm, like, 80 years old, I would love to still be having sex with whoever I'm with It's 80, or even better, 20. But, um, <laughs> but, um, Pussy high five! But anyway, but she was great, and Children's Hospital would be really cool. Um, what, I mean, I don't, I don't like to plug too much up. Oh, the other thing was maybe the uh, Funny or Die thing on HBO. Um, oh, great. Yeah, you did yeah, one we, of those. We shot, um, we shot a series for that Funny or Die Presents on HBO that starts really soon, and uh, it's going to be really cool. It's called Hold Up, and it's, uh, it's all a bunch of funny people, Ed Helms and Tom Lennon and stuff. Ruben Fleischer directed it from Zombieland. Oh, Rob, Rob Ruben. people, you are the, at the epicenter of hilariousness, and um, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having Thanks for me, for you guys. On the podcast, Rob Hubel. Thanks, you guys. Good luck with your dog. Thanks, guys. Rob, I would like to state right now that I don't concur here with uh, Chris. I did not have a good time with, with you on the show, and I can't wait till you get out of this fucking I office. I hope that you have a terrible Valentine's Day. Too that, late. I, I, hope, I hope you just keep stuffing your face with those Laura Dune cookies and staring <laughs> at rock-hard dudes. I hope that you... <laughs> I hope that you go you to, to I hope that you go to like an adult store and you buy a plastic vagina and you make love to it and it clamps onto your dick and balls. I'll say it again. Like Rob, a bear trap. Too late. 
<laughs> That's called a bear trap. A bear trap. <laughs> oh, I was gonna have Matt ch swap out the RAM on my MacBook. I'll just do it after. You have to do it afterwards. Wait, you're gonna do that during the show? It takes him 30 seconds. He's like, th there's another, there's Thank another you. Chris Hardwick who's a Rubik's Cube champion who solves Rubik's Cubes in like 30 seconds. <laughs> he does the same fucking thing with RAM. He'll fucking swap your RAM out so fast you won't even. It's just like, bam. You're like, what happened? He's like, you got new RAM. You're like, no way. Whoa, yeah. Really? I snap my fingers. It that happens. sounds like a really cool visual thing that wouldn't be appealing on a podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. You'd think, but it's fun to narrate stuff. And now I'm pulling out the battery. <laughs> Here goes two gigs of RAM, Yay. and it's in. Is that the kind of stuff? Is that the now celebrity I'm pool? It. And now he's going to try and get it into the hole, and he doesn't do it. Bravo <laughs> presents celebrity RAM swap. Oh, oh that'd be so much fun for a second. <laughs> I really, um, I really did think it was celebrity pools. Like you'd go to celebrities' houses and see their pools. That Just would be in pools. such a good show. This is your standard oval pool. I'm confused. Is the show over? Or is it still going? It's kind of both. <laughs> so it's over, but so is this part for us, or is it? Are, will people be listening to this? I like to think that the whole thing was for us. Oh, yeah. It really was. Oh, I got you. <laughs> it was us and just a handful of other people. Oh, I got you. A, ha a handful of angry youths, blind yeah. people. Yeah. Who are trying to read the iTunes and that would not braille? They can uh -huh. just turn text to speech on, I guess. Let the nerd dis podcast. <laughs> can we do better text to speech? By the way, text to speech is so fucking terrible. Some of those voices aren't bad. I have I have text to speech um, on um, in my car, and when I call you, I say call Jonah Ray, and it goes Jonah Ray. Like, oh really? It, why is it? It can't. Why can't it fucking sound better than my that? My Bluetooth is actually pretty good. It pronounces my real last name correctly. Oh, really? Which is weird because... Ray? Uh, Why is that hard? No, no. My, my real last name is uh, Rodriguez. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, so it, like it looks like Portuguese. Rodriguez. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much spelled exactly like Rodri Rodriguez. Why don't use that name? That name's way cooler. And it was because, uh, you know, everyone would pronounce it Rodriguez and not Rodriguez. Who cares? That's even cooler. Yeah, I don't know. I just It was, it was just an like easier Latinos. thing. It was just easier when you I was... You don't like Latinos. No, no, but I'm Portuguese. Uh, when I was signing up for open mics in the beginning, I just kept on getting brought up as Joan Rodriguez, and then I'd come on to stage, and it would throw everybody off, and then oh, I would feel yeah. I had to... Explain why Jonah Rodriguez looked like me, a guy from, you know, I look like I'm from the Midwest or something. And then you throw on top of that, you're Hawaiian, and yeah, then, and then, and then yeah. the whole thing is fucking when I did, confusing. Uh, when I did uh, Live at Gotham, they had a the whole thing. It's like, this next guy, originally from Hawaii, I was like, you got to take that out. And I like, no, we like to have it seem like we have people from all over the country. I was like, you're going to ruin the first three minutes of my set if you say I'm from Hawaii, and then I walk out on stage. You fucking coconut fucking poi chin. Yeah, fucking <laughs> Just trying to be racist to Hawaiians. Uh, all right, thanks for listening. The end. Is this the end or is this the end? It, that was the end, Rob. You blew it off. Fuck. Her Majesty's put in the skull. Oh, I can't pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Don't have to. We're not making money. Only the end. Thanks, you guys. All thanks, right. Rob. Thanks for that, me. But wait, that's not all. As previously promised, we're going to go over to Motion City Soundtrack now, right before the show at the House of Blues. And uh, it's the first band on the show. A musical guest playing a song. Yay! Day of firsts. Uh, wow. Digging that smooth vibe jazz music that's playing. Yeah, that is royalty-free music. That's what free buys you. It's like... Jumping in a Cadillac and driving into molasses. I hope Motion City song is this good. Time for waffles. Yeah. I saw four really depressing words uh, while I was driving over here to the House of Blues, uh, and they were on the Palladium, and those words were Justin Bieber sold out. That really bummed me out, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really bummed me Who's out. Who's that guy? Is he on, like, a, is he a Disney Yeah, kid? he's a little, he's a young Well, that's why, that's why they have the problem. That's actually, they have a problem with him. They think he sold out. Because yeah. he went to that's Disney. Just, he uh, can't possibly sell out when you're 14 years old. You don't even have a soul yet at 14. You can't, you can't be enough of an artist to then sell out. I think you're just, you're just naturally sold out, you he know, until you, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, is that? What? I mean, seriously though, is that the kid on uh, Witches of Waverly Place? I don't know. I really Why do don't I know, know this? I don't know. Sure. What, is he, what is his music like? like? Please, it sound like. I've not heard you. a note. I've I know my niece avoided. loves him. Yeah. Is he on, is he on tapestry swastikas? <laughs> that hot new show. That's, shut, that's shut up. Where it's where it's a bunch of young, really attractive uh, Nazi uh, kids, and um, but they're really hot though. They're really hot. That's the thing. Um, no. <laughs> yes. Right yes. after right after Wizards of Waverly Place. <laughs> right after on, on, on Disney. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I met you guys in Minneapolis, which was really nice. I got a tweet. I don't remember who tweeted me first. 
this guy Jesse. Was it you, you tweeted me first? Probably is. And um and you came out to the show and you guys were awesome. And then we <laughs> we got to. Would you like to explain a little bit because um, audio uh, you don't consume with your yeah, eyes? I, I so, actually added to it when I was in Texas and put. Uh, oh my God, that's a- awesome! Alan Moe's on there too. <laughs> that's fantastic. Jesse has uh, some amazing Pee Wee Herman tattoos uh, on the arm. The snake. You've got the the bike. Uh, I've got the the dinosaur with seats in his mouth and holding Pee Wee's bike. There's the road sign that's all twisty turvy. The squiggly road sign. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, the gas pump and broken like dinosaur bone that Andy picks up and chases him. Andy, Andy, <laughs> and uh, Mr. Breakfast, which consists of uh, pancakes, bacon, eggs, butter, and uh, strawberry. And then you really should add a box of Mr. T cereal above it. Yeah, you need yeah. Yeah. I got room here. Yeah, there you go. But I was gonna put the hot dog with the file. I, I, I gotta figure it out. Oh, that's pretty awesome. And then of course the uh, um, I'm all alone. I'm rolling a big donut, and there's a snake wearing a vest. Yeah, so I have a snake <laughs> wearing a vest and a giant donut around my elbow, which happens to also be the Simpsons donut. Oh, right, but oh, it the, does. The sprinkles aren't colored in yet. Well, don't show it to me till it's done. That's what a <laughs> bullshit tattoo. <laughs> I want to see colored sprinkles. Rainbow Jimmy's. Rainbow yeah, Jimmy's. Rainbow Jimmy's. I know, color's insensitive. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to say colored sprinkles. <laughs> That's what my grandpappy would have said. <laughs> what? This is an underlying theme. I'm from Tennessee. Um, I've always wanted, to, I always toy with the idea of getting a tattoo and then... And then I'm a, I'm so non-committal. I feel like in a month I'd be like, God damn it! That's exactly the problem I have. Those Why are the ones you put I... on your legs? <laughs> like, <laughs> then uh, you're not... um, in Japan, I got one that says "Me so hungry." <laughs> and there's a Miso squid. Soup. There's a squid in there. Um, just one. It just says foods. <laughs> Some, um, uh, in Australia, I got a kangaroo with a koala in the pocket that says "Rue life." Just, <laughs> just dumb shit. Now, when you go to Australia, do you do you flash that, and are they like, "Oh, that's a delightful <laughs> depiction <laughs> of our society condensed into one piece of art." <laughs> the funny thing is, the it's actually a, t- a take on um, uh, a flag they used to fly on one of those. I don't know what they call it, but the big sailing competitions. Mm-hmm. Oh, the um, the that was that was what the, is that called? The, the, the kangaroo with the boxing gloves. But I put the claw in the pocket to make in the make it better. Yes. What is that stupid thing called? The long hot summer. Was that movie the Versus one crazy summer? summer? Amer- is it summer? the America's Cup in Australia? It was the Austral- Australian. Oh, I think it's team. called Boats A Go. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> isn't that the, isn't that the Renata? Yeah. Regatta. 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 That's it. Yeah, it's the big <laughs> race in the end of uh, One Crazy Summer. That's right. Oh, yeah. that movie. Yeah. Is movie. He, was there a lot of boat racing going on in movies in the 80s? I think so. I think Summer Rental also. Yeah, Summer Rental. Yeah, it was a race. Summer movies. It was really just anything. You know, the bummer part about uh, One Crazy Summer is that (coughs) Better Off Dead is probably one of my favorite movies Mm -hmm. of all time. And so um, Savage Steve Holland, uh, they screened Better Off Dead up at my uh, girlfriend's comedy festival in the SF Sketch Fest. And so Savage Steve Holland came up and spoke, and he said... The experience between Better Off Dead and One Crazy Summer was so different because he said, "I don't know what he said. I don't know what happened, but whatever John Cusack thought we were making with Better Off Dead, he didn't like it when he saw the finished product. And so working with him on One Crazy Summer was a bummer. Oh, that sucks because oh, I dude. love yeah. Better Off Dead. Yeah, Better Off Dead's amazing. One Crazy Summer, I was never so like so it's hot on. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. Um, except for that that one Bobcat Goldthwait part where he's like. Oh, and there's this kid, and he used to get beat up a lot. And they're like, were you that kid? No, no, no. He used to say, why are you so fat? Why are you so fat? And then I beat the shit out of him. Yeah. That was, that was, that was, it's pretty epic when he gets in the Godzilla costume, and he's stuck in it, and the cigarette goes in his mouth, and it's just breathing Oh, smoke, and then the and Japanese people on, are yeah, there. stepping yeah, on all that. It's a pretty epic moment. That was a pretty awesome movie. Yeah. Do you have any body parts left for a Savage Steve Holland uh, pain? <laughs> Yes. You're like stained glass of awesomeness. It's really, it's really, it's really cool. Um... I don't want to keep you guys too long. Uh, Is there any... Did you want to... I mean, you don't have to play a song or anything, but if you want to, I did bring the snazzy Gibson guitar. Your new fave? I did. I'm so gay for that guitar, you guys. What kind of guitar did you get? It's a a Gibson what? It's a J200. Oh, nice. And um, they... I said... uh, I just kind of called... I just emailed them out of the blue, and I was like, I I need a guitar for my television show. 
that a thousand people watch, and um, <laughs> <laughs> I left that last part out because I wanted to hear the guitar. Sorry, I didn't need to laugh so hard. Wasn't a joke. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! And then, uh, and oh, then nice. so they, nice. and so they, they sent me. Uh, they sent me this one. Nice, nice. Um, it still smells like lacquer. Yeah, it does. You could get high. You could get high just oh, huffing, huffing I'll the guitar. Oh, here for a minute. Yeah, nice. I'm gonna huff the guitar. I'm scared I can't of it. even hold it right here because of the way the table is. So I'm gonna give it right back to you. Oh, well, I can smell it from here. Does anyone? Does Do anyone want to play wanna, a song? Anyone want to play a thing? Well, you want us to sign it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I actually, I actually just got endorsed by Gibson. So. Oh, you did. Um, yeah. yeah. What if I'm too nice a guy and I'm so like, does that mean that you're allowed to play? <laughs> okay. I'm allowed to play. Sure, let's you just sign it. Uh, <laughs> and then you just write like douchebag on it. Yeah, you want to play something? Just drop big How would you do that? Yeah. Uh, would we want we go, another guitar? We could go get another guitar. Yeah, yeah, we could grab our guitars and the thing and just yeah, do the thing. Or do you want to just do it with one guitar and do you, you like covers? You could play a cover and have them sing it. I don't know where you're going to sweat it. I, just, I don't know. This is your show, man. Yeah. Oh my god, you're right, it is. I'm <laughs> ill-prepared in, in the way of covers. You like how uh, like okay, none seconds. of us can make a decision about yeah. that? Oh, yeah, we're like, horrible. Like, yeah. Tell us what to do. Yeah. You want a song? Nobody can make a decision. Try Nobody it. can make a decision. Here, why don't you just play her words, you do the beat, and then um, I'll try to sing, and you sing too, and Jesse, All right. I don't know. Oh, whistle, whistle the uh, whistle. The Somebody, key had a Somebody had a pick. And yeah, yeah. I need, this. I need to sit in a better spot. I won't hit the table. I'll hit my lap or something. Yeah, it's I don't want to have a good idea. Any more room? This is this. Sure. I don't know. This. Something's about to happen. I feel like I should stand up. Oh, shit. Oh. So sorry, guys. Yeah. Sorry. I just said that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you can sing up. Yeah. Just do the. Do that with your voice. <clears throat> I need your sick arms. Sick arms. And they got, arms, you got, got a kazoo on them? <laughs> yeah, time for a kazoo. Alright. Alright, you wanna do this? Sure. You wanna tell them what it is? Oh, it's called Who Words Destroyed My Planet. Awesome. Is this from Dinosaur Life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. One, two, three, four. Maybe you were Sorry. right after all. Sorry, <laughs> Tito. What? No, that was good. I like the five. Says, Sorry during it. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to do one, two, three? Yes. How about yes, I just that start it and then you just. Okay. Okay. I can. Maybe you were right after all. Maybe I'm just bad news. I've been drowning in memories Call it residual blues I fell asleep watching Veronica Mars again Hey! Futs with that tourniquet. I tried to squeeze on your dreams. Slung it on, it's a perfect fit. What do you suppose I need? My parents keep asking when the planet I'm coming around. If we only stay together, I might not. Jimmy down the street I even quit smoking weed I'm taking it on I'm learning to speak Japanese If we only stay together I might not have fallen apart But the words you said Destroyed my planet I'll stop before I'm
Next time we play a tune, nice. <laughs> mind me to tune the guitar. No, uh, no that was great. awesome. Uh, thanks. Guys, thank, guys, thank you so much right for <laughs> spending the afternoon with me. I know I, I think thank you, you probably have to go and rehearse for your show or do a sound check. Something. How long do your sound checks take? Tonight, minutes. today it'll be like a minute because we have no time, but usually yeah. about 10, 15 minutes. Oh, well, that's not bad. No, we yeah. usually don't like to be those kind of bands that don't let every, all the other bands get on stage fast enough. Sometimes you go on a tour and the, the headliner would just sound check forever and leave nobody any time to get and the opening band is actually setting up while the kids are coming in that's always fun I once saw uh, Henry Rollins when I was younger do his, his, his like spoken word thing mm -hmm. at First Avenue and the mic kept being back and then he just finally lost his shit in the middle of the set and yelled at Sound he's like I am one guy on a huge stage <laughs> and you can't get this fucking thing to work because he's just like he's like he's like seriously when this whole band's up here it doesn't feed back like he's just like not gonna lie at the beginning I was hoping you actually were gonna say that you saw Henry Rollins do stand up because that would have been that it's picture kind of like yeah, stand up that picture in my head like but no but like take my wife please like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. just Henry Rollins doing what? what's yeah. up what's up what's up with, up with flying yeah <laughs> I gotta pay for blankets now <laughs> <laughs> fuck you blankets <laughs> and everyone's like it's really hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, he just he just squats <laughs> down. <laughs> That's awesome. No, but yeah, stand, stand be, up rage. That nice needs to be flash animated <laughs> for something. So if if listen, nerd, if you're listening out there, there's a specific nerd out there who will make the Henry Rollins uh, stand up flash video. <laughs> please, please, please do that on behalf of myself and Motion City Soundtrack. Uh, well, good luck with the rest of the tour, guys. Thanks, man. Thanks, thanks for having for, us. Thanks for dicking around. Okay. That's what we do best. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> now leaving nerdist.com.